أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والتابعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brother in Islam and sister in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته After request of many brother and sister The topic tonight إن شاء الله will be marriage marriage and divorce and family structure in Islam especially in America and Europe and Australia may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in my heart and my tongue what benefit to me and what benefit to those who are going to listen to this tape and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to when I die insha'Allah I will leave something can be benefit me and mankind after my death insha'Allah and can reward me insha'Allah and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in Islam everything has to be set according to the intention by this way my intention is how I can be in health and exercise good and prevent evil as a duty of me as a Muslim and how I can accomplish something to be benefit me when I die and I can take it with me in my grave insha'Allah and this our goal all of us as a Muslim to work for the hereafter what about the listener the intention of the listener is how to gain knowledge can benefit us to have success in this life and the year after and why this topic in particular tonight because today when I look to family structure and all the problem the family and the most of the family Muslim in Kayas and this why we see what we see all over some Muslim when they hear the step they might not like it male or female some of non-Muslim when they hear the step they might like it or didn't like it again ask yourself what I said wrong to can you dislike or didn't like if our intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put in my tongue and my heart what benefit to us I said before in another tape about the family issue just a reminder to me and all of you is the main purpose of marriage is to build the ummah because the first nucleus of the ummah is the family and the family is the first piece and the first structure in, in the local level and it is the main focal important element in the whole ummah if the family is unity and have harmony and have tranquility and have peace and have goal and know what they want in this life and year after they will be strong family and if they are a strong family the local will be benefit from them and if the local will be benefit from them they will be benefit to the ummah and they will put one of the first seed to the ummah and the more the family ummah is strong the more the ummah will be strong and if the family is weak the whole ummah is weak and we talked in the other tape about the important of women role in Islam which Islam recognize the woman role is actually more important than men because they are the educator of the new generation of the ummah this why Islam recognize if woman is good family is good local is good ummah strong and good meaning strong benefit 
they know what their duty and what their goal. And the opposite, if women in Kayas, in a wonderland, in dunya, in this life, in just collecting material, and they have no goal, is no success for the family, is no success for the local level, and is no success for the whole ummah. By this way, anyone who understands this deen, who understands the way of life of Islam, he will discover is the first problem in the ummah is the family. And this is why I said today, when the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to go to the masajid, the mosques, they were men and women, they have a lot of deen, a lot of faith, a lot of quality. And when they go to the masjid, they eliminate the masjid, and they will spread the light of Islam. Today, may Allah forgive me and all the Muslim ummah. Today, we carry a lot of disease in the family. We take our disease and we go spread it in the masjid. You think masjid will spread light? How masjid will spread light? When we are a bunch of sick people, resident in the house of Allah. And this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'm trying to promote the idea of go back to the first seed. How the Prophet ﷺ built Islam. He built it house to house, family to family. And when the family was strong and they know their duty, they was able to carry the burden and responsibility of the duty as a Muslim. Today, may Allah forgive me and forgive you and all the Muslim. Today we have a lot of jealousy, a lot of disease, a lot of greed, a lot of selfish, which it should not be, exists in the heart of the Muslim. Everyone try to f fulfill his need, he or she. And after that, we run to our home. Do you know what the outcome of that? Once the Muslim will be selfish, selfish and greed is blind. And blind, you will not able to see what good and bad of, for you. And once you do that, you finished. And wonder if you cannot succeed to know the need of you, can you do it for others? You cannot. Because in even Arabic terminology, and Arabic say, الكأس ينضح بما فيه. The glass will not give you except what it's containing of. You have a glass full of milk, it will give you milk. Glass full of water will give you water. Glass full of dirt will give you dirt. And even in America, they have a say, a computer language, they know it. Garbage in, garbage out. If my heart, I fill it with garbage, what do you think? What is the outcoming of my heart? Will be whatever I put in it. If I fill it with all the material and all the need and all the desire, what left? I'm just putting between me and you the fundamental core of our problem. When we forget where we are and who are we who we are and where we're going and our responsibility, we become like animals and even more or less than animals, running after some materials and willing to do anything without no principle to gain what we think can be benefit to us. Unless we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and discover the truth, we cannot succeed. From this point, we can start our topic. Because unless me, as a man or a husband, understand my responsibility, my goal, toward myself and the local, it will not benefit me. 
and I cannot benefit my family. And similar, if the woman or the wife in Islam do not know her duty and her goal in this life and hereafter, she cannot proceed and she cannot really accomplish something to the family or to the husband or to her children or the local level or the old ummah. By this way, we have to discover first what is my goal before I get married. What is my goal? What I'm looking for, male or female? I'm looking for Miss Beauty and Mr. Handsome. I'm looking for Mrs. Rich and Mr. Rich, the doctor and engineer, the businessman who has money. What I'm looking for? Or a woman inherited some money from somebody or I'm looking for someone has same understanding of life or similar and she has the same aim and this is what we forget today very important to understand marriage is a corporation important corporation and until we understand it it is corporation we will be in chaos and this is what happened today we have another point very important sometime when we start talking about the role of men and the role of women some women especially american or western women they believe it is like too much against them it's actually the opposite if we understand the role of women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in my heart a few days ago. I said, the best example to explain about women is like the pilot in a, in a plane and the helper of the pilot. Who is the helper of the pilot? The navigator. Similar in a boat, you have the captain and the navigator. The captain, he needs a navigator. But the navigator, she ha has, or he has, to follow the captain. Meaning the navigator has to understand what the captain wants, what is his aim, what he tried to accomplish, or where he going. By this way, he will navigate according to the desire of the captain but cannot be the navigator going according to what he want. Doesn't mean the navigator is not important. It's a very important element to save and help the captain to go through his destination or the pilot. Similar in regular life, our women and our wives, they are the navigator of the Ummah. They are the tools to help us to reach. But what happened today in reality is either we do not choose the right one from the beginning or we start looking for trouble in the long run during marriage and we'll end up with divorce. And it's another chaos for the Ummah. Why? From the beginning, we did not choose the right mate and the right companion to build the right corporation. Now, what is the main element I'm looking for when I look for my wife or my husband? According to Islamic understanding and from life experience. First, I have to look for someone, he or she, have a similarity of my goal, willing to accompany me in my aim. What happens if me, he or she do not have a goal? And one day I decided I might have a goal, I will have a problem. This is why I ask male or female alike, start getting your goal before you start you getting marriage. Because this one creating a problem. If I have a goal, 
before I marriage, I look for similar goal. But if I do not have a goal, I will not know who I'm, I'm going to pick. And maybe one day I decided my goal getting clearer. Now the problem occur. My second part of my company is not going in the same goal. He or she has different goal. No wonder what happened. A house have two goals. One want to go north, the another one want to go south. What you expected from the house. And this is a very important element we lost today. Because me, he or she, male or female, when we get married, we're not setting the goal clearly. And what happened? We choose sometimes the wrong one. And once we choose the wrong one, our life will be terrible. And we cannot produce. We cannot have success internally or externally. Why? Because we're fighting. Doesn't mean fight has to be fight physically. No. It is a fight by the aim. By the goal. And you find it a lot today. A lot. The disease increasing. One part want dunya, want material. The another one want deen and want Allah. And one hereafter. And the problem occur. One want accomplish deen in his house, he or she. And the another part is not willing to do so. By its way, my brother and sister in Islam, I ask you, please, before you get married, think, what is my goal in my life, in this here life and hereafter? What is my aim? What is the things, the main priority in my life I like to have? And if my mate or my company, my corporation, he or she will have the same. All this has to be set before marriage, or at least to be known. Not just a sweet talk before marriage and after marriage and after kids, everything starts being the opposite. By this way, we have to choose not according to the color, or according to nationality, or according to anything. No, according to my goal. Because the best company I will have is the one he or she have the same goal and have the same aim like me, identical. And this can be anyone. Now let's break them down. And when we break them down, when the problem occur. When we start looking for the same nationality and the same organ, it has benefit and it has harm. It has the positive side and it has a negative side. What's the positive first? We carry the same culture and habit and custom. It makes it easy for us. This is the only thing benefit us. Same language, same everything. will make the communication easy. But actually we forget another communication. The communication of the heart. Communication of the goal. Communication of the aim. Where are we going? Now we go to the negative side. And instead of following the Quran and Sunnah, and follow the command of Allah and teaching of the Prophet, we inherited a lot of disease from our culture and our custom. And we think it belong to Islam. But in reality, it not belong to Islam at all. Now, what I discover, people who marry from the same organ and the same ethnic background and the same nationality, we increase the disease. Because it's very difficult to break 
Because I would say, my father used to do. She said, my father used to do. My mother used to do. Her mother used to do. And even if I try to change, the family will interrupt and will enter and in creating a war instead of creating cool and peace and tranquility. Why? Again, because the reality, I want to say, which a lot of people will not like, the Muslim from quote-unquote Muslim background and countries, we have no Islam in our life. We have a skeleton of Islam. We have just a layer, outside layer of Islam. But the reality, we carry a lot of disease. We carry a lot of custom and inherited habits has nothing to do with Islam. And we think it is belong to Islam. By this way, when we marry each other, we increase the disease. And we build up more disease and more corruption in our family. By this way, I'm saying the mixing between different ethnic and different family and different background is more healthy to the Ummah today than marrying from the same, same organ. Why? To break the cycle of disease of every location. Every country, every Muslim country, or quote-unquote Muslim country, they have their own disease, they have their own habits, they have their own customs. But they do not realize it unless they get in touch with somebody else. Once they get in touch with somebody else, they realize what's going on. I should do that. But if the other side of the family really sincere, he will ask he or she, why? And if we question and sincerely and humble and we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi 99% of 100 we will find what we used to do has nothing to do with Islam. And it's just a bunch of habit and custom again. And we hold tight to it. More than we're holding tight of the name of Allah. To the point I considered one of the great shirk the Ummah is following today. And this is why we have to realize that and start clear it. By make sure my maid, my company, my corporation, the main thing is we agree from the beginning is we going to try to search for the truth and we're going to try to be really harmony and tranquility and loving to each other for one aim and one focus and one goal which success in this life and hereafter not only one both if we find this person he or she now big part of the problem in marriage has been solved I see today a lot of young people they marry from different origin and different nationality. I said there's nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. I consider it one of the most beauty of the things we can do as a Muslim today. But just choose the right one. Choose the one she has the same aim. And don't be trapped by the beauty or by the money or by the status. Look again to the state of mind, the state of heart, and what you aiming for, what she aiming for. This is a core. Because today, even in the community of non-Muslim, you find very good people, and also very bad people out of work, similar to Muslim. You find people only in material stuff. They do not want even word religion. Now, if you find male or female, they not into religion, and they said, I'm not ready for that now. I don't want it. You think how you can start your family. And think about it one or two years when you have a kid. One or two. 
and each one wants the kid growing in different status in different religion and now the whole family in chaos or I met some family who are decided to make their kids atheist just to make it neutral by this way he will not be belong to the father and he will not be belong to the mother look at this a lot of disease wonder why again because there's no unity between them even before marriage and sincerity is not there or sometimes you meet people who claim this is what I'm going to do we decided after one or two years you make this you make a decision and said no 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 I changed my mind but usually these people you know them even before you get married you know the person from his personality if the person has his has he or she has no word they have no value of life in this life and hereafter what you expect we have to be clear about that before we get married because once we get married nothing you can do except living miserable or try to make the best of it or with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he put mercy and content and tranquility in both of you but how many of that very few from a thousands but the majority is the opposite and fire start inside and what the end of the fire is the collapse of the whole family or the stray of the whole the kids or the divorce and the corruption of the unity of the Muslim and finished today the majority of quote unquote Muslim even the ones you look, mashaAllah, beard or no beard, hijab or niqab, cover up completely or not. They look as a beautiful Muslim, but in reality, they worship the materials. They worship themselves, because when a time coming to Islam in their houses, and Islam in their family structure, you find it is almost minus zero. Argue arrogant, disease, running after dunya and material, no respect for each other, no unity and harmony, no love, no focus goal, not even any goal. All they want, apartment, house, car, money, land, make it, save, do this, do that. And I feel shame when this is the majority of what they quote and quote Muslim family from Muslim country. And this is the majority. Before you get married, is he asking for too much money? After you get married, is he asking for too much to live and different high status? And during marriage, all the asking for different material things. And even if you divorce, it's still asking for material things. It's almost like nothing. No focal goal. I scream and I say, Wa Islama, where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart of us? Where is the fear of Allah? Where is the taqwa? Where is the love of Allah? Where is watching? Allah is watching. And we will be questioned and reckoning in the day of judgment. By this way, my brother and sister in Islam, please make Salat Istikhara, make prayer Istikhara. Connect yourself to Allah. Sit with yourself, find your goal first before you get married. By this way, you know who you're looking for and who will be he or she your company. Now you have another style of marriage. Marriage from different ethnic and background between what again quote unquote Muslim and again another war between custom and habit between different groups different understanding 
and again is a broken of the family inside is anything has to do with Allah no is anything of what going on belong to Allah no you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran he said in Surah Al-Hashr نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم Imam Ibn Al-Qaim Al-Juziyya Rahmatullahi Alayh May Allah be, give him mercy in his grave He said something beautiful about this verse He said if people Even in general Muslim and non-Muslim Understand this verse They will be in fear He said what more Than you forget your own self He said do you know What the meaning forget your own self Forgetting what good and bad what benefit and what harm? Imagine a person do not know what benefit and harm him. What more than that? Meaning a state of blindness. What happened if a blind go without a stick of wood? Or without somebody to guide him? He only can harm himself. Similar, a human being without guidance, he has to harm himself. He has to. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a creator, sent messenger and prophet and, and revelation to help mankind to go toward the right path. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you forget me, I make you forget yourself. Finished. Topic is closed. It's a dangerous statement. It's a warning statement from Allah to us. But where is the heart who can hear that and understand it? What is meaning brother and sister in Islam? Once we go towards the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give us wisdom, He will give us basira, He will give us vision, He will give us understanding. He will unite the heart, He will let us go toward what is benefit to us. He will make us, He will help us to get away from what harm us just by connect our heart toward Allah just by doing that we will reach and everything is start getting clearer little by little now you have another things you have Muslim who marry from different religion And again, you have different problem. What is the problem? Either if he's a man, he's not follow Islam. He's not setting the example. He's not setting the role model. Or he's not patient. Or he's not kind. Maybe he's not generous. Now, he's causing problem to his another company. But the another company sees the wrong Islam. And the another company becomes reluctant. Or he follows Islam, but all he wants is the other party to become a Muslim in the time he wants. And now he commits shirk and he causing himself to be a pushing. When he push too much, the other side becomes reluctant. Because you feel it is not freedom. Because Islam do not come without freedom. It has to be the freedom of the heart. Once a person has the freedom of the heart, he or she will be easy to choose completely with freedom. Without no any tie, without no any hidden things, or without any pressure. This is why when a man came to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he intended to kill him. His name is Raqqa. Now we call him Radiallahu Anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. And Umar ibn Khattab Radiallahu Anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, he find out he's going to kill the Prophet. And you know who's Umar, if you are a Muslim. He's a very strong. And he fear Allah. And he loves the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very much. He took him, he tied him down, and he went to the Prophet to bring him, and all the Muslim ready 
to kill this man, the one who coming to intend to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Wonder what happened. When the Prophet came, he looked at him. He was sitting in the sun with his hand tied. He asked his companion, is anybody give him drink? He said, no. Is anybody give him food? He said, no. He said, please, feed him and make him drink. He was sitting in the sun for so long. This is a teaching of our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Now, after he give him the drink, and he calm him down, and he make people put him in the shade, he asked him, O oh, Suraqa, embrace Islam. He said, no, I will never embrace Islam. He said, okay, just promise you will not harm me and not harming Muslim. He said, I promise you about that. He said, okay. Release his hand and cut the ropes and you are free, Surah. Go. Surah left. After some time, he came back and he embraced Islam in the front of the Prophet. The Prophet asked him, how come when I ask you to embrace Islam, you will deny and now you embrace Islam? He said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, Oh, the Prophet of Allah, when you ask me to embrace Islam, my hand was tied. I do not want to embrace Islam under any circumstance and under a condition like that. I do not want the people to say, Suraqa embraced Islam because his hand was tied. But when you release me, and you make me free. Now, I want to embrace Islam to Allah because I discovered the truth. This example, my brother and sister in Islam, for those who are very tough toward their wives or keeping them, giving them da'wah invitation to Islam, too much to the point they make them away from Islam. May Allah forgive me if I'm among them. Because Islam coming with kindness and generosity, I ask Allah to put it in my heart and the heart of you, insha'Allah. And with ease and patience, and make a lot of dua, and be mercy to each other. I have another story to share with you, to explain to you. When Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, one of the early Imam, his son, he went to one of the battlefield, almost like South Russia or north of Turkey. And he get with him one of the slave. And she was a girl. He loved her. And he, she was his slave. He invited her to Islam. She refused. Imam Abu Hanifa was not at home. And his mother and his grandmother was home. Everybody gave her very tough, harsh da'wah, invitation to Islam. And the girl screamed, and she used to say, I will never be a Muslim. Now, he used to warn her, when my father come, you do not know who he is. He's a big Imam. I do not know what he will do with you. Now Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullah alayhi, he came back from trip. He has go, been going to it. And when he came back, the first thing he said to him, this is the situation. We have this girl in the basement. She's a slave of our son. And she refused to embrace Islam. He asked about her condition and the ways he gave her invitation to Islam. And he said, is this the way I taught you? Is this the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught you? His son inquired, Oh my father, what I did wrong? He said, how you invite someone in a slave of you? He said, what do you want me to do, my father? He said, first, you let her free. You give her her dignity. Give her complete freedom. After that, let her choose. At this time, Allah will melt her heart 
and she will understand the bounty and the beauty of Islam. By the will of Allah, the girl escaped from the basement because she was thinking this Imam will coming and torture her. She heard the conversation. She was hiding and she heard the conversation between the son of Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Abu Hanifa. And she heard the recommendation to his son. And she heard about his son said, but I love her. He said, this is not the way. Now, Imam Abu Hanifa left and the son going to this girl. He finds the girl unconscious. And when he wake her up, he said, what happened? She said, I listened to everything you guys said between you, your mother, and your grandmother. She said, how you do that? She said, I was wanted to know this man, what he going to do for me or to, to me. She said, I won't see him right now. He said, it's too late. He's going for another trip now. She said, I want to go. He said, why you want to go? She said, I want to embrace Islam right now. He said, she, he said to her, what make you change your mind? She said, his wording, it reached my heart. His wording is what I was waiting for. His wording, like it was a blessing and healing above my heart. When he tell you, treat her good. Feed her of your food. Give her the best clothing. And do not burden her of any jobs. And set her free. At this time, she will be listening to you. He tell her, and now I'm telling you, you are free. Do whatever you want. She tell him, please, do not allow me to go back. And she, I want to live with you. This is Islam, my brother and sister in Islam. Because I saw many, many family, men who marry non-Muslim, they treat them very tough, with very harsh. If they believe this is the only way and they have to invite them toward Islam in this manner. Or they live in a chaos they live in a bad example, and the wife do the opposite. She study about Islam, and she looked to the husband and said, what going on? Where is Islam? And this something is unbelievable. And now when a man start being Muslim, and he start really embrace Islam, now he becomes so fast and so harsh against his wife. And I said, who you are. Allah is the opener of the heart. Allah is the one who gives guidance, not us. We only convey the message. We only can talk and invite. But the real one who accept or do not accept, open and close, give guidance is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing in our hand, everything in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the second group of people. The one who are half Muslim, half non-Muslim. I ask please, he or she, just be patient. And remember, you not the opener, you not the guider. You not the doer, you not the owner of the heart. It all belong to Allah. We have to set the role model, set the example. Be kind and be generous. And a lot of these people has a lot of quality. Beautiful quality. Just be patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open insha'Allah. But we have also to have faith in Allah. And have to connection to Allah. And make dua for them. And cry for them. Like the example of Imam Al-Fudayl. Al-Qadi Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad al-Andalusay. Who in some report, he used to be a man who drank. Drink alcohol, womanizing. And one day, at the first time, he was going in the street drinking and completely drunk when one imam saw him in the street. 
He was mercy. He has a mercy in his heart. Real Imam. He make dua at this time. Oh Allah, allow me to take this person and make his tongue and his mouth instead of full of alcohol, full of your name, Ya Allah. And he take him his house. He start throwing up this man. And he start giving him a shower and let him go to sleep. And when he sleep, he built next to his bed food. And this Imam start crying and start making dua to Allah. The drunk person wake up, he find this person crying. He looked to himself, he didn't remember where he is and what he's doing. He discovered he's clean, very clean, and sleeping in a clean bed with clean clothes, food next to him. And this man prostrate to the ground and keep crying. He said, what's going on? And he keep hearing what this man crying for. And he find out this man all is crying or for him. When he discovered all this crying for him, he cried very much. And he said, if this man cries so much for me, what about me? And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from a young man in the street of Andalusia, A young man from the street of Andalusia, Andalus in Spain, from a young man going to hellfire, stray, only drinking day and night, to one of the major Imam in Islam, Al Qadi Al Fudail ibn Ayyad Al Andalusi. And he wrote books and books and books for mankind to come. In fiqh, tafsir, to love Allah, to get closer to Allah, MashaAllah. Books about Sunnah, book called Al Shifa, The Cure. Beautiful man. But look what happened. It takes a man has a heart and mercy to change the condition of a man and mankind to come. How many people became guided by this Imam Al Qadi Al Fudail ibn Ayyad al Andalusi? When we look in the history, we get amazed. What we learn from these examples? Why I give these examples? Because we are the student of our teacher. Our teacher is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah. And the Prophet of Allah was mercy to mankind, and we should have mercy. We should cry for them day and night. O oh Allah, give guidance to my, mankind. Give mercy to my wife, or give mercy to my husband, or give mercy to my kids. According to our intention, Allah will give us. My dear brother and sister in Islam, we come to the third group of couple marriage. When a young man has no goal, only dunya, only life, marry another one. It doesn't matter which religion, Muslim or non-Muslim, Christian or whatever. Of two people full of dunya, meaning all your mind and heart, how to accumulate money how to make business, how to be success in this life. But you're not thinking about the hereafter at all. Wonder what happened. You're looking for another maid like you. Right? So you're looking for a man or a wife with money status or business status. Wonder what happened. This marriage become a very successful marriage until you have kids and by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the status of your heart and the status of mind change. Now you won't go back to Allah. You won't be a true Muslim 
or he or she, she won't, or he won't be a true Christian, or whatever, any religion, wonder what happened. All of a sudden, the reality start. What is the start? The opposite. And when the opposite start, the family broke down again. Why? From the beginning, it was no core of wisdom and core of goal between you and your company. And this is the third group, and the majority of people, or the majority of Muslims like that. Muslim by name, coming to America or Australia or Europe, only running after money, they looking for the second part, just to fulfill the need and getting life started, and look normal like family, and all of a sudden, the need of each other become different. Even if they are Muslim, okay, because today we are called Muslim, but in reality we worship ourselves. We worship our desire. Because even sometimes you see people going to the mosque day and night. But in reality, they worship dunya. They love dunya. They work for dunya. Their aim and goal in dunya. In this life, an accumulation of material. Once one of them try to work for hereafter, the problem occurs. Why? The unbalance of the need, unbalance of the goal. Now the second part will fear. What happened to my goal? How I accomplish this? How I can accomplish that? They feel something big missing. When this happened, the whole family cares. Now, if you have children, not only you cares your life and the children. What we're looking for? We're looking for no ummah. And this is what's happening today in the reality of the Ummah. And even I'm going to tell you something sour, but this is a reality. How many of our father and grandfathers, they live as a husband and wife, but they're not husband and wife. They're just acting like, because they want the house just to survive. But in reality, no harmony, no love, no unity, no goodness. What kind of house is that? And how we can feed our children? What we feed them? Conspiracy? Talk about each other? No respect? No love? No unity? They will grow up with a lot of confusion, a lot of hypocrite. Who feeds them that? Us, the parents. And this is why the parents in the front of Allah, they have a very important goal, an important reckoning. Because they are the farmer of the generation to come. They can farm flower, they can farm fruits, and they can farm poison. Bunch of hypocrites. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we are, my Muslim brother and sister? Where are we going? What is our goal? What is our aim? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to remember what is our game and aim in this life. And is really we take it as a game, as a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed, and just a play? Or we remember what's going on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, He prescribed the main thing in this life in a very tiny chapter. And actually, it's very tiny uh, part of a verse, which is the second part of verse 20 in Surah Al-Furqan, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something beautiful. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْدَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةٍ أَتَصْبِرُونَ وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا We create you as a trial to each other. You will be patient, and Allah is all seen. Meaning the whole relationship between each other is a trial. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test our sincerity. Our really reaching toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are really sincere. My dear brother and sister in Islam, please... Go back to your goal. Go back to your creator. 
and ask yourself, is me sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what I want from my life? What I want from my life as a man? What I want from my life as a woman? What, what I want from my life as a husband? What I want from my life as a wife? Who I'm looking for? Who I'm going to choose? And what I'm going to choose he or she for? What is our goal with each other as a husband and wife? What kind of cooperation I want to create? What kind of production I want to generate? All this we have to think about it very thoroughly before we get married. Not after getting married. This recording is designed for those who did not get married yet. The other, just be patient and make dua. Because nothing we can do. Destiny is destiny. But now we have choice. Please, my brother and sister of Islam, wake up before it's too late and remember where are we going and what we want to generate. We want to generate another corrupted family or we want to generate a good, healthy family. Please, Choose according to the status and goal of you. Set your goal first. I repeat my talk many times because it's very important. Set your goal. Set your aim. See what do you want. What you want in this life and hereafter. And make sure before you choose, you choose the one similar. And also something I have to tell you before I leave. The Prophet wasallam asked us, when we choose, we not marry a person, we marry a family. Because a woman or a man has a family. And they will be interacting with each which, which other, which other, because we are one family. Now we cannot deny and blind our eyes from the important role of the family, of either one side in the company of the family of a husband and wife. They affect very much my brother and sister in Islam. Especially if the man and woman is not close to Allah and you do not fear Allah. And when they start taking advice from other more than taking advice from each other. Please wake up and do not make any hasty decision. Ask for advice. Share. Share what you have. Ask people elder than you and knowledgeable than you. Make istikhara to Allah. Look from every perspective in your life. Sit down and think about your goal. And do not be persuaded by sweet talk. Sweet talk after a while. The gun and the reality will stay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me and make you benefit of what I'm going uh, to talk about. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in it and light to those who will hear it insha'Allah. And maybe insha'Allah we'll have some continue or question answer later on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us to be guided in the right path insha'Allah. My name is Jennifer Vodertava. Um, I'm American born, having married um, my husband from uh, Algeria. I'd like to share with you some experience having been born here in the United States and married to um, Muslim coming from different backgrounds, different faith, and um, problems, and inshallah, um, possible solutions to try to help people so that they can, uh, inshallah, help their families to be stronger and be more towards um, worshiping Allah than growing apart. One of the most common things I saw when I was first married to my husband, because I used to come with him to the masjid even before we had a family, was I noticed um, 
the children, children who were from marriages where the mother was not Muslim, the father Muslim, and it would break my heart to see these children, no identity, didn't know which religion they were, what they wanted, what they liked, often um, very rebellious when they were brought to the masjid. So that I made a very conscious decision with my husband that no matter what, because he, he showed me that it was very important, even in Quran, that the children be raised Muslim, I saw just from watching the children in the masjid that if you, if you didn't work together, if the mother and the father didn't at least work together for the sake of the children, the children would be lost no matter how diplomatic that they wanted to be with the situation. So, and I think people lose sight of the fact that the children are one of the main things because when, when you're teaching your child and you're bringing your, your child up, you know, I think because American culture, you know, you just think, well, the kid comes along and, you know, you're the mother, you have this natural instinct and it'll just be this, you know, it's just words and you're talking words and words and, you know, they'll learn it, don't worry. But it became something much more different for me when, it became something much more different for me when, when I started to raise my oldest, I started to realize that it's it's not um, words, it's a whole way of life. Islam is a whole way of life so that it becomes important from the very first steps, from the very first saying the Adhan in their ears. It's much more serious than just words. They have to see it, live it, and feel a part of it so that it becomes very important that the mother becomes you know, um, more serious than just telling your child to go pray and telling your child to fast during Ramadan. It's not enough to do that. And you have to be more than just a model. The children have to feel a sincerity about it. And if you, I mean, it's not, it's hard to explain, but it, it translates into the children. If you aren't serious, the children won't be serious, and and that's where you start to realize that there's a sense of of community, and there is a reason why Allah puts uh, the mother so much responsibility on the mother and so much respect for the mother because she's the one who is transmitting much more than just words, it's a whole way of life and it's very important so that couples need to work together. If my husband had just married me and decided just to, you know, let me go my own way, I don't know, I think our family would have been lost, but it was also Allah's guidance that helped me to see through my children that Every time I did something, I felt like oh, it's not enough. I want to do more, and I want to do more and more. And I came from a point of not knowing anything about Islam until I started to try to read and find out more because I wanted to be able to explain it more to my children and for them to know. And it's, it wasn't enough for, well, just ask your dad, just ask your dad. I wanted to know to the point that now that I'm raising my children, I want them to know for themselves more than just, you know, be able to read. I want, inshallah, for them more than just to be able to read Quran. I want them to understand it, not to have to wait for someone's explanation, but be able to understand it with a full understanding in their own hearts. So, inshallah, I hope that other people realize that that needs to be a goal too, not just to say the words, but to really know what it means.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The sister, she was speaking to you. Believe it or not, until this moment, until what she tell you, she did not embrace Islam yet. Even publicly. Even she is a teacher, Islamic teacher. She educate her children completely Islamically. Her family I consider to be a role model for many other family to follow. She is a woman, I know her for the last 10 years, and I hope a lot of Muslim women should be like her, or even part like her, of her dedication and her trying and her sincerity. And she remind me by a lady I met in Chile. When after I invite her toward Islam, she tell me, no, I'm not going to embrace Islam. I tell her, why you do not want to embrace Islam? She tell me, who are you to embrace Islam to? I tell her, what do you mean? She tell me, I embrace Islam to my creator. You do not have to tell me to embrace Islam. You see, I tell her, you you completely right. But let me tell you, why in Islam you have to embrace Islam in public? I know deep down inside of me, I met many Christians and many non-Muslim, and inside of them, I used to be crying. They are actually a pure Muslim and they do not know. In the front of Allah, I used to cry when I used to walk in Chile and Argentina and different areas in Latin America. And I met people, all they have in their tongue, gracias, adios. And when I ask, what the meaning, gracias, adios? Meaning thanks to the Creator. And you always happy, always content, in a state of contentment. And when I look to sometimes people from Arabic or Muslim country, their face is dark. They have no bounty. They have no beauty. Why? They not contend with what Allah give them. I said, Subhanallah. Here you are, a people who is non-Muslim, by quote-unquote label, and they actually have the quality and the belief and the contentment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what the Creator give them. And we have a Muslim, or quote-unquote Muslim, who embrace Islam, they go to the masjid, and because they're bad example, the non-Muslim sometimes they feel reluctant. I do not want to be like those. This is the last thing I want to be. And even sometimes, some of them share with me, the Creator know who am I. I do not have to say it. And they are right. The only part they forget one thing. Do you know even in the early Islam a lot of people was Muslim and nobody knew? And even it was advisable from the Prophet because he was being tortured. But actually embracing Islam loudly for two things. The major and benefit is two things for the human being. Number one, to let other know is almost like marriage you see it's almost like marriage and business why we have to announce it to make sure the right of husband and wife would be accomplished today because the lack of rights people said what's the big deal anyway my rights I cannot get what is the right of a Muslim the right of a Muslim is humongous but people forget about the right of a Muslim if I see you in the street, I take care about you. I make sure whatever you need, or if you are in calamity, I will help. Also, I give you the greed. Also, is if something happened to you, I have obligation to help. And if the person die, I make sure the person get his last rights, which to be washed Islamically, to be buried Islamically and most of all
to have Salatul Janaz as a prey over his body according to what Allah wants. And also if we look to the Sharia and why a Muslim has to announce or pronounce his own Islam in his community. The, another purpose for it was to make sure people do not play game. Because Islamic rule is not a rule for certain people. Allah know. He created us and He know. Some people is weak, some people is sick, some people play game, some people hidden things. But it's with the rule of Islam, actually a rule for all. You might be very sincere, but what about others? And this is what some hypocrites used to do. They used to do the opposite. Show Islam in the open and in the hidden, they doing something else. Today, I can say it loud and clear. In the time of the Prophet, hypocrite was, and hypocrisy was hidden. Today, MashaAllah, Astaghfirullah al may Allah forgive me. Hypocrite is unknown, is known publicly. The people pray, after they pray, they start their own hypocrite. Even in the past, the hypocrite used to hide. Today, the hypocrite said, I'm a hypocrite, but in different tongue. And if you do not believe me, read Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 7 to almost 23. You will know who you are if you are sincere. By this way, my brother and sister in Islam, our sister is the one she talked to you. She pray five times a day. She have full-time hijab. She educate her children fully Islamically. She teaching Arabic and Islamic knowledge. She fast the month of Ramadan for last almost 10 years. And she have a full heart full of Islam toward Allah. Even she wrote many songs for kids to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And until today, she did not loudly embrace Islam in public. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open her heart and make it announce it because it's a key between her and her creator to be humble towards the Creator. Yes, my heart was her of what she see, a quote-unquote Muslim, pronounce shahada, pronounce Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greater, and their action is completely the opposite. But I said to her, what Yusuf Islam said is, do not look to Muslim, look to Islam, because when we die, if the angel of death coming, he will take us and will be questioned in front of Allah, None of these people will benefit us. They not our judge. They not our role model. No, we have a duty. Like I said before to some of the Muslim, I said when we go to teach non-Muslim about Islam, and when they ask what is Islam, we said the submission and surrender toward Allah. But I said what about us? What about us, the one we? Call other to submit, and we are too far from submitting. This creating a big gap and big confusion in the heart of the non-Muslim. They look at us as really a bunch of hypocrites. And if the person is not really sincere and not well educated, wonder what happened. It will cause the person inside a big tragedy and delay the person from getting closer to Allah. This is why one scholar, he said, today Muslim like a black snake. A black snake holding a diamond. Do not want to leave the diamond, and you do not want to benefit others with the diamond. This is what happened to us. We're not using Islam, we're not embracing Islam, and we're not inviting others to Islam, because we're not even implementing Islam. By this way, we become really the calamity and the things to stop like the wall between us and the mercy of Allah. Like one scholar he said today, Muslim are really torture because they are the one stopping the mercy of Allah on earth. Not non-Muslim is Muslim. Why? Because today of our action we leave other with a bad example.
to the point they said, I do not want to even hear about Islam. I do not want to be close to the masjid. I know, I know people who are sinners, but they said, I do not want to go to the masjid. I said, why you do not want to go to the masjid? He said, once I go, I find the imam fighting with so-and-so. And this one's fighting with so-and-so. And the president wants so-and-so. And this one, he said, if these are people who are learned, and these are people who are supposed to be a role model, what about me? I'm better than them. I have good quality more than them. You see, shaitan enter. But something I said before you came, sister, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, the, the criteria, in verse 20, the last half of this verse, something beautiful. What he said, I create you as a trial for each other. You will be patient, and Allah is all seen. Allah create all of us as a trial. Today, I said, Muslim as a trial for non-Muslim, and a non-Muslim trial for a Muslim. Good trial for evil, and evil trial for goods. And this is the sunnah and the way of Allah. Now, what we should do, we should not be hesitant and blind our eyes from whom we worship. We worship Allah. We do not worship people. We do not care about what people say. We care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But shahada again, shahada should be pronounced. And even in the front of two as a witness, Minimum, some time. Why? Why? Like number one again, humble between you and Allah. To pronounce, you have been submitting. That's it. Number two is to keep your right and to save your right and to make sure you get your rights as a Muslim sister or a man in this life. But can it have anything to do with the hereafter? No. No. Pronunciation has nothing to do with the after. Like pronouncing marriage. Why a man and a woman, when they get married, they have to be pronounced for their rights? Just to protect their rights. Just rights. In case somebody get married and after a couple of years he get kids, but he decided he going to divorce. But nobody know he can escape. And he do not want to give the right of his wife and children. Now, if it's not announced, the wife and the children cannot get rights. This is why even if we study in the marriage in Islam, in the early Islam, it was no paper. It was no writing. Writing came later on when people decided they didn't want to play a game. I hope I share with you some of a very important point about Shahada. Because I believe deep down in my heart, from knowing you for many years, you already embraced Islam a long time ago. You already did. And just the lacking of, and some time, from the disease of us, not you. It is us. Because I know another brother, without mentioning his name, he was for 12 years trying to enter Islam, but he tell me, Every time I go to the masjid, I change my mind. Imagine. And he learned very well about Islam. He knows it for a fact is the truth. But he will not embrace Islam every time he goes to the masjid. He told me because I used to fight fighting and argue and no good manner. And I said, their kids like acting like shayateen. Why when I go to the church, the kids is very humble and quiet. When I go to the masjid, the kids acting like shayateen, like devils, running like crazy. You know? And even if you look to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kids to be present in the masjid, they have a lot of manna. They should be clean. They should not run. Because masjid do not containing only human being. Masjid containing human being, angels and jinn. Muslim jinn. They can be praying. They can be having halaqa and dars and teaching and learning. Even if the masjid is completely empty, it's not empty from anybody. Because it's the house of Allah, it's not my house. Yes, you might close it with a key, but angels do not need key. 
jinn do not need keys and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep his houses occupied with us or without us by this way my brother and sister in Islam this is a very strong message please look at this this is a reality what kind of example we give it to others what kind of example we give it to the non-muslim in here and like I said before I saw a lot of non-muslim they are internally Muslim completely actually missing Shahada and how to pray and whose duty is that is us like even I went a couple of years to one church and when I enter my speech I said to them we are a criminal and they look at me I said yes we are a criminal in the eye of the Creator because we never take the message and implement it right and we never convey it to other we the owner of the message and we never implement it and give it to others and my advice to you sister inshallah try to embrace Islam as soon as possible loudly just for you not anybody else because once you embrace it loudly it's almost like you having an open contract between you and Allah it's an open contract what about all the ritual you can have all the ritual but Allah wants certain way is obedience because actually when you study Islam like one scholar he said it beautifully his name is Imam al-Mundari one of the early Imam almost five six hundred Hijri which almost now like nine hundred years ago he said if you look to all the ritual and all the command and 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 the uh, order of Allah one of the hidden main things in all this command and order is not the benefit sometimes we like to know what's the benefit what's the benefit what's the benefit and he set a very exa beautiful example he said you own a company or own like some kind of business and you have many people working for you and you want to know who's really devoted to you or not just complete devotion what you do you give them certain order it might act very simple it doesn't mean too much but the hidden message there who going to implement it just for the loving and devotion to you the most one loving you and devoted to you he will implement it without questioning people who questioning the devotion and con humble and love is not completely there this why Iblis Allah give us example he was angel or a jinn Allah no he was very high in reckoning to the point he was with angels he know Allah he knows the power of Allah he know who he is he have a lot of knowledge and in spite of all that he refused a simple command by Allah why again it was a trial for him by this way all this was the Prophet said about Salah if your Salah will not prevent you from doing bad deed is no Salah for you if you look to fasting fasting people think about fasting from mouse and and intercourse but actually fasting by all the limbs and the body and the soul they took the material part of the fasting and they forget about the main thing about fasting even Hajj we will go to Hajj like going to Walt Disney and the things he did Hajj and becoming Hajji just by name and nobody know who's Hajji who's not and if you want to know really and you are devoted Muslim to Allah look to your manner the thermostat and the thermometer of a Muslim is his manner if your ritual is really pure to Allah and really devoted to Allah your manner will increase your level of manner will increase with the human being with other with neighbor with everybody Muslim and non-Muslim because today I forget who tell us to curse other who tell us who's going to paradise or hellfire nobody know nobody know I met a lady in Chile 88 years old 
with the will of Allah, I give her invitation to Islam. After one year, she embraced Islam. 88 years old. Imagine. Who can say a woman live as a Christian or any another religion for 88 years and she embraced Islam in the last moment in her life? And not even that, she went in her own street and conveyed the message. Unbelievable. And she's 88 years old. I saw many examples of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will and guidance to people by his own will. You find a lot of people today embrace Islam just by their own will, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy because we're not doing the job. And you are an example of them. May Allah give you guidance and help you and make you steadfast and be pleased with you, you and your family and give you blessing in this life and hereafter and join all of you and your family and your generation to come until the day of judgment in paradise together as one family insha'Allah. Say Ameen insha'Allah. And all of us and all the Muslims and may Allah make us guide to others, not be a trial to others. You understand this topic now? Okay. You want to embrace it loud now? What is missing? You know what I used to do in uh, the South America? One lady, she asked me, why you push me for it? I said, I'm not pushing you for it. You know what I, I said to her? I told her, this is a key of open the door of mercy between you and Allah. If I believe angel of death can come in tonight and can take my soul, you really I want to go meet Allah without one simple command he asked me to do? Because not done and is not designed by me or you or somebody else. It is part of our faith according to the teaching of the Prophet, not according to anybody, not even according to scholar. People one time, they claim in the Prophet time of the Prophet Wasallam. he said, this lady, she claims she's a Muslim, but she's not a Muslim. He said, why you said that? He said, she's doing this or she's not saying that. She was an old woman. She cannot talk Arabic really like really good. By this way, it seems to be she cannot really pray it in the right way. He said, call her. They call her. And the Prophet Wasallam, with the will of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him merchant and live in different area in Arabic peninsula. By this way, he, he, he know the language of different tribes and the accent. He asked her, who above? Or he wave up. She said, the creator, Allah. He said, who am I? He said, you are the prophet of Allah. He said, go, you are a Muslim. You see, the prophet was, his, 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 his way of teaching was very simple. No complication. Again, for the right of the person. And also when a person embraces Islam, something people argue with me, but I believe it 100%. I forget where I read it, but I read it in one of the very old books. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the highest gift he give it to somebody in earth? What is the highest gift? Do you know what the highest gift Allah give it to somebody? Guidance. His mercy. How you, how you translate this in action? Meaning he allows a person to embrace Islam. And again, do not put in your heart the Muslim from Arabic country or... No, no, no. Embrace Islam. Submit to Allah. Not by the state of tongue, by the state of heart. State of the tongue is just announcing. That's it. It's just like, you know, filling contract and sign. Doesn't mean you will fulfill your contract. You know? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided a person, he will give him this gift, this scholar, he said something. He said, if a king want to decorate a person from his people. He do it hidden or he do it in public. Everybody agree, he did it in public. He do it in the front of anybody or special people. 
in the front of special people. Similarly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the ultimate gift, Allah can give it to anyone on earth with shahada. He has his own angel all present. And make them bear witness, O oh my angel, so and so, the go, he or she going to pronounce my name and going to submit to me in public. Bear witness, he or she will be forgiven. And also forget something a lot of people forget. When a person embraces Islam, he's pure. The moment the person embraces Islam and he's pure, whatever he asks for, it will be granted to him as a gift. This is why some scholars teach me this long time ago. Once a person embraces Islam, ask him, please do whatever you wish from you to Allah because you're granted. Whatever you want will be granted to you. And also he tell me something else. Allah is so generous. The people who are present in the time of the person embrace Islam, they will get also the same reward. Why? Because Allah value what he give as a gift. But today we do not understand all this bounty and this gift. If we understand it, we will really embrace Islam. And we will really remember who is the giver, who is the owner, who is the creator, who is the provider, who is the merciful, not only by the tongue, by the state of heart. And again, I want to share something with you and anybody who hears this tape, inshallah, is whoever Allah give him vision. We say it in every starting of a beginning of a talk and we forget it. Whoever Allah give him vision and guidance, nobody can make him stray. And whoever Allah stray, nobody gives him guidance. It is a gift by Allah. But only you will allow to do it when your heart completely devoted to Allah without nobody. Nobody. You have to look to nobody. And this is a trial we have to struggle for it. The salvation of Islam, not a, a, like a, a rosy word, you said shahada and that's it. Because the moment you said shahada, actually, this is the moment you really want to embrace it inside your life. It is an oath. It's a contract. You wrote the contract. Now, for you, sister, you already wrote the contract. You just didn't sign it yet. That's it. And signature is very important. And my advice to you from deep in my heart, just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for your benefit, in case you die tonight, don't delay it. Don't delay it for a moment. Okay? And you already have the two witnesses. Okay? Say Bismillah. Yes, inshallah. Come on. Come on, inshallah. It's up to you. If you have to you. If you feel like it. Whatever you want. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can share it off. Make it with the intention, not for the tape. Yeah. Okay. Shut it off. My dear brother and sister in Islam, something in my heart, I want to share it with all of you. Today, I saw a lot of non-Muslim. They carefully embrace Islam. They carefully try to really submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it aching me when I see us the one who is supposed to came from a Muslim background and Muslim country we did not even submit 5% or 10% of what these people did or do imagine a sister she submit to Allah day and night Working for Allah, day and night, sincere to Allah, day and night, and afraid. She is a hypocrite. She afraid she is not embracing Islam. She afraid of being not a slave to Allah. And we, where we are, 10 years, 
she acting completely as a slave of Allah and she afraid even to embrace Islam and she afraid to say the Shahada and we say the Shahada by the, our tongue or by inherited and where we are we are too far even from their own toes of a sister like that where we are from them where we are from their own sincerity my dear brother in Islam us who came from a Muslim background I ask you we embrace Islam is a time to embrace Islam is a time to go back to Allah and ask ourselves are we really submit my dear brother and sister in Islam the sister you just heard in the tape she embraced Islam after 10 years of praying fasting teaching Islam and she doesn't even believe she's a good Muslim. And what we done? What we did? I feel shy and sad when I see our brother and sisters from back home or from Islamic country and we're not even coming close to the toes of one like the sister and others. May Allah bless her and give her barakah and support her and save her her and her husband and her children and be like them today the sign of Allah changed they supposed to look at us and act like us today I said to us look to like the non-muslim when they embrace Islam because they really embrace Islam and we should act like them May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us remember who we are and where we're going. I always say it over and over again and who we're going to meet. We're going to meet Allah, we like it or we don't. And either we meet Allah and He will be pleased with us or we meet Allah and He will be angry with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us meet Allah and He will be pleased with us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the blessing and light to our word and our action and our heart and our vision to let us know who we are we are slave and servant of Allah and we have a duty and we have a goal and we have a job to do not to build houses because our house is already built in paradise and I will end it up with a weak hadith but is a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he went to Isra and Ma'raj and he finds the angel Jibreel taking to different area in paradise and he finds some angels building in paradise and some another angel carrying what this angel built and put it someplace else he said oh my brother Jibreel I saw something I do not understand some angel building and some angel moving what the other angel building in paradise he said O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O the Prophet of Allah no one of the son of Adam Allah give him soul without having his own place in paradise but if the person believe and good deal, do good deed to reach the level when Allah will accept him this place will be inherited be giving somebody else and this is why the angel move it to some place else and this is why we will find in the Quran many many verse about the Jannah Nurithuha Mirath and Mirath by Arabic meaning inherit inherit meaning is not belong to you it used to be belong to somebody and somebody else do not take it and he will Allah will give it to you this meaning the Jannah paradise we going to inherit it but inherit it from whom do you know brother and sister in Islam we are running after Shaqqa a place in Egypt or a place in whatever you know everybody in Egyptian talk about Shaqqa Shaqqa meaning apartment in Egypt they can do anything halal or haram just to build it or to buy it people are ready to do anything to build in this life and we forget Every day we marry or divorce daily. 
Every day we build or destroy daily, but not in this life, in a hereafter. And which one is really more important? To buy and gain from Allah or to lose what Allah already written to us? Every day we lose or we gain. Every day. This is why in the Day of Judgment, a lot of people will be sorrow. Even the people who go to paradise, they will be sorrow and sad. They ask the Prophet, why? He said, because when they feel how much they lost every second in their life when they do not pronounce Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala name, when they do not do good deed, when they do not engage what is right. My dear brother in Islam and sister in Islam, today those who are guided by Allah, hold tight, ask Allah to give you the steadfast and give us his tuqama because it's from Allah is a gift. And those who are blind, when you look at them, said exactly like the Prophet sallallahu said, Alhamdulillah, alladhi aafana mimma abtala bihi kathira min ibadu wa faddalna tafdila. Say, Alhamdulillah, thank to Allah, the one, he choosing us, and he gifted us, and he choosing us from among a lot, and he elevating us, is a gift. Is a gift. We cannot do it without the will of Allah. We cannot reach what we reach without the will of Allah. And our, game, uh, our aim and our goal is to reach those who are the example of us as a companion. Because today, shaitan make us look to the bad people and say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. No, this people is not our example. Our example is the Prophet وسلم, and his companion. Our goal, how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to please Allah. He deserves to be pleased. He's so generous, he's so kind, he's so gifted. Today we're talking about our own family problem and we forget even our own brother and sister in every calamity in a Muslim ummah. Why? Because selfish and blind and greed. You go to masajid and speeches, 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 but no action. The companion do not give speeches. Companion do talk. This is why even some of the companions used to say, the quality of the believer, talk little, do more. Today we what we do? We talk more, we have little to do. Why? Where we are. My dear brother and sister in Islam, I keep repeating because I wish this word can reach you and you do something about it. Change your life before it's too late. Make sure who you marry before it's too late. And otherwise, you're generating another of hypocrite nation, not a Muslim nation. And hypocrite, who they are? Do you know in Quran is only three kind of people? Believer, disbeliever, and hypocrite. Who's a hypocrite? The one who called I'm a Muslim. And he know what is right and what is wrong. And he decided to do what is wrong. It's not a Jew. It's not a Christian. It is us. Each one of us should face many finger to himself and say, where am I? Who am I? What I'm doing? What kinds of sincerity I have, what I accomplish to mankind, and what I accomplish to myself in this life and the hereafter. What I'm going to take with me in the grave. A few years ago, I used to give right to people to go to the airport from family, and I found out they worry about their luggage. They worry about their bags. And I said, SubhanAllah, something it hit me. They worry about their bag and luggage and if one is missing. But what about us when we go to the grave? We're going to carry our own bag and luggage. But do you know who fills this bag? Me. I'm fulfilling my bag daily. I'm the one who put in my bag what I'm going to take with me the moment of death. And the immigration angels and the custom angel will open the bags and no bag will be missing. All of them will be there and all of them will be open and all of them will be accountable and I'm going to be the only accountable for everything I have in this bag because I'm the one who put everything inside. And I cannot blame nobody. 
Today, we can blame each other. Very easy. Shaitan make us blame each other. But remember, at the moment of death, I cannot blame you, you cannot blame me, you cannot blame except yourself. Similar in the Day of Judgment. Think about this moment. If you have a heart living and you believe you're going to meet Allah, think, think sincerely before it's too late. And ask question. Seek knowledge. Seek advice from those who can benefit you before it's too late. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to the benefit of his deen, his religion. Make us carry the banner of Islam in this life and make us go to our grave with something he will be pleased with and he will be happy with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sincerity in the seen and the unseen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us loving him and make us love those who love him and make us make other love him and know who is the creator اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين اجمعين سبحانك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمه